climate change. That's one of those environmental issues. It's fine for people who eat granola for breakfast and wear Birkenstocks year round, but it's just not something that someone like me would care about, right? <laughs> one of the greatest challenges that we face is the fact that climate change has been labeled as an environmental issue. And when we say the word environmental, people have this immediate mental image of someone who hugs trees, scolds others for not recycling, and always votes green, if they vote at all. The reality though is that climate change is a human issue. And last I checked, most of us are human. It's also an economic issue, a humanitarian issue, an issue of national security, and the management of our natural resources. And yes, of course it's an environmental issue too, because it affects our environment. But what is our environment? It's our home, planet Earth, the only home we have. The other summer, I was speaking at a science festival in Norway, where I had the honor of watching Stephen Hawking give one of his final talks. As you may know, he was outspoken about the dangers that climate change poses to human civilization as we know it. But in speaking of those dangers, he said something that shocked me profoundly. To escape from climate change, he said, we may have to terraform Mars. What, I thought, as I nearly leaped out of my chair? There's no way. If we don't fix climate change now, the impacts on human society will be so widespread and so devastating that we'll be incapable of terraforming Mars, let alone populating it with any significant number of people. So the next day, when I was waiting backstage before my own talk, I found myself in the company of Lord Martin Rees, who is the Royal Astronomer of England. He is also a longtime friend and colleague of Hawking's. So I took the opportunity to ask him, do you agree with what Hawking said? I will never forget his answer. Oh no, he replied, shaking his head. Fixing climate change is a dawdle in the park compared to terraforming Mars. I know people who are excited about going to Mars, and I wish them well. But space exploration will not solve the problem of climate change. That's because the planet that we already have is our perfect home. We don't often think about the fact that every resource we have and use comes from the Earth. How long would we last without air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat? And that's not all. The materials we use to build our homes and our infrastructure, to make the clothes and the goods we use, including the phone or the computer, or even the TV that you're using right now to watch this video, every piece of that came from the resources provided by our planet. That's why to care about a changing climate, we don't have to be someone who considers themselves an environmentalist, although it certainly helps. We just have to be a human who wants this planet, the only one we currently have, and are likely to have for a very long time, to continue to be a safe home for us all. And it isn't about moving climate change up our priority lists, as if it's currently at number 21, and we need to move it up to eight, or maybe even three. No, I don't think climate change needs to be on our priority list at all. The only reason we care about it is because it already affects everything else that matters to us today. Just think about it. There are more than seven and a half billion of us on this planet, and we have built our cities and our countries and our socioeconomic systems on the assumption that climate is stable and that the conditions that we've experienced in the past paint an accurate picture of the future. Today though, that assumption is no longer true. The Earth's climate is changing faster than any time in the history of human civilization. Why does that matter? If we value the places where we live, which for hundreds of millions of us are in areas that are already at risk due to sea level rise or stronger storms or both, if we care about climate change because it impacts the food we eat, where we grow it, how much it costs, the air we breathe and how clean or dirty it is, the economy, national security, humanitarian issues like hunger and poverty and disease across the world. In short, climate change will directly impact the future of civilization as we know it. If we care about any of those things, then we are already the perfect person to care about a changing climate. Now, it's true 
there are some values that are incompatible with fixing climate change. But those values are ones that put short-sightedness and greed front and center. If all we care about is our comfortable life today, or how much money we could make this year from digging up or burning fossil fuels, no matter what harm it does or what impact it has, then sure, we would not care much about climate change yet. It just doesn't make sense. But if you're a human here on Earth and you care about your family and their future, you already care about climate change. You just might not have realized it until now. By connecting the dots between what we value, what we hold dear, or even what we like to do in our spare time, whether it's skiing or birding or hunting or fishing, and how climate change will impact those things going forward, that's what gives us a genuine motivation to care, to do our part, and to hold our elected officials and our politicians and our leaders responsible to do their part too, to curb our carbon emissions before it's too late. Thanks for watching Global Weirding. This episode was brought to you in part by Citizens Climate Lobby. If you have any questions about climate versus weather, let us know during one of our Facebook Live Q&As. And please be sure to check out globalweirdingseries.com for more episodes. See you next time.